Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking about base locations in Kenshi. Actually what I'm going to be giving you is a synopsis of basically all of the base locations I have ever made in this game and I'm going to be telling you which ones are good, why, and basically explaining stuff like that. Um, so before we actually jump into me showing you gameplay footage and stuff like that, I would like to show this page on my website. This is the base locations guide that I have on my website. Every single base location that I have made with uh, a video or otherwise is on this page. In order to reach this page, all you need to do is go to computer at the top here uh, and then pick Kenchi from that list of guides and then you'll get this page which has basically all of the information you could ever need. The first, oh and it also has uh, base locations that are sorted. As you can see I have end game base locations, farming base locations, mining base locations, and noob zone base locations. So you'll see the very first base I have listed here is the Fog Island Mega Base. This is, in my opinion, the best base location in the entire game. And the reason for that is because it has a great environment and it has great resources. Good iron, copper, stone, water, fertility, basically everything. Uh, the fertility and water is a little bit low on the main platform that you'll be making your base. However, it's not the end of the world because you can still get water up there and you, there's still enough fertility to grow. Um, there's also a lot of fog, what are they called? I can't remember what the little fog hive men are called in fog islands, but fog men, there you go. There's a bunch of fog men around this base that you're able to fight as well, which will give you, um, mid game to, um, late mid game combat stat skill ups. So the next one on this list is South Wetlands, the farm base that I made there. This is a decent base if you want to build a farm. I think it's probably one of the better land, better locations for farming. So what I did at this base is I produced a lot of fabric and a lot of food. And that's basically all I used it for. And I kept a small group of characters here uh, for that reason. This base was made on a little island in the middle of South Wetlands. Like if we click on the picture, you can see here the little island that it's on. And that was able to give me a lot of protection from basically all raids because it was safely played, planted on that island. And as you can see on this page, basically every base here has a location YouTube video for you to watch too. This one doesn't because I forgot to make a video for it. Shem was a decent uh, mining outpost. I don't believe that it was too good for farming. The fertility is quite low. And you can make it quite defensible. You see, you see these little blue marks on the map here. Um, usually that is water and you can build your base in such a way that enemies would have to swim through water in order to reach you which makes it obviously easier to build walls and turrets to prevent the base attack so swamp in my opinion swamp is a great location to build um, a base great for farming also great for mining depending on where you build your base the location I picked here had good iron and good copper you can see the location here it's also right next to uh, gray flare village mud town and shark you will get a lot of visitors. You can see the white dots on the map from all of the base raids that I had to deal with there. Or uh, base visits if they weren't base raids. Shrieking Forest. This is one of the lesser base locations that I have done. Right here on the border of Floodlands and Shrieking Forest. Constantly attacked. It was nice for skill ups. Great Desert. This is uh, another mediocre base location, in my honest opinion. You, It's a good for mining, not very good for anything else. Um, food production here is very, very low. It would be something to keep in mind. Sorry, hiccup. It is close to Stoat, and it's also close to technically the other towns in the Great Desert as well. And as you can see here, my uh, my website always lists the environment for these areas. It will also list the enemy attacks that you should expect here, the resources you can find within the uh, the walls that I built, and other things that you should expect here, like Traders Guild taxes, United Cities taxes, yada yada. Raptor Island Mega Base right here. It's very very secluded. It is uh, it's very secluded and it's halfway decent for farming. That's what I would say about it. oh, and lots and lots of iron, but no copper. So that's that's the big drawback. You would have to import electrical components if you uh, made a base there. Vein, right here. This base has uh, more copper nodes than I've ever seen anywhere else, if I'm being completely honest. I never got a single enemy attack while I was there, which 
I do not know if it was a bug or not, but it was, I spent like a couple days there, real, and I mean real life days, uh, playing while at that outpost, and I didn't see any enemy attacks. Also, one thing that's worth mentioning about Vayne is it is a complete lie that the rain is acid in that zone. It's, it's not. It's just red. Um, so the environment in Vayne is interesting. It is 50% arid, 50% green, and 20% swamp. This is the largest environmental spread of almost any zone you can find in the entire game. So you can grow basically every crop here. That is one of the reasons, too, Vayne got a good base rating, aside from the fact that it didn't get any attacks there. And you'll notice all of these locations, too, have a base rating. And these are just my own subjective ratings that I gave the location in comparison to all of the other locations that I had. Since technically Fog Islands is the 10 out of 10 location that I have, all of these other locations are basically being compared to Fog Islands. Or at least that's how I would look at it. So the border zone, this is a good area because of it's basically the, one of the best newbie zone bases. As you can see, I built mine all the way over here towards the Skimmers Roam zone line. And it's kind of on the cusp of Swamp and on Shem. It's in a good good location right next to a way station. So there's two vendors there plus a, plus a bar which you can hire people to protect your base and everything else. Kind of close to Holy Nation territory so you will get Prayer Day amongst other things. And as you can see, the environment in the border zone is halfway decent as well. Howler's Maze. This was actually, uh, it does. Ha this zone does have acid rain. And uh, it was actually, a, like, I, I liked it. I thought it was a pretty good location to build a base. Um, so when you get attacked by enemies from the United Cities, they come from the north here. And they will run down through all of Howler's Maze, and they will suffer from the acid rain. They'll arrive at your base at about 60% health. When you get attacked by reavers, they're going to come from the south here, and they're going to swim across the river, so they're going to arrive at your they're only going to travel a very short distance through Howler's Maze before they arrive at your base. They're not going to be affected that much by the acid rain. Uh, and the same with crab raiders. When they come visit you, they're going to be coming from the south, so they're not going to be affected too much by the acid rain that you have to deal with while you're here. Otherwise, uh, this base did get a lot of raids. However, it was excellent as far as farming goes, and it was excellent as far as resources go. I, uh, I consider this to be one of the better locations, in my opinion, for making a base. So, uh, Stobes Garden and Green Beach. This base is kind of right on the border of both Green Beach and Stobes Garden. You'll technically be able to build or uh, grow in both of those environments. Um, at this location and this is another one of the very very good locations on this page and I would give it an 8.5 out of 10 lots of iron uh, very little copper that is the, the big downside of this area and you will get frequent visitors from crab raiders reavers skin bandits and probably skeleton bandits too uh, they didn't make the list because I don't think I pissed off skeleton bandits with the, um, with that playthrough so hang this is another newbie base location one of the good things about here is it's kind of on, uh, as you can see, it's like right in the middle of all three United Cities towns, Heft, Hang, and Stoat. So you have more vendors than you ever know what to do with here. This location also has iron and copper, but the only downside is the environment is not the best. You will get slave raid attacks here, desert ninjas. You also get probably uh, United City heroes when they come bother you, and everything else that every other base raid that frequently happens in United City territory. So Storm Gap Coast, this is on the cusp of United City territory. You can see right here. That is the only location in Storm Gap Coast in this area right here where I found iron and copper close enough to each other. This is also a pretty good area for um, mining. You will get attacked by reavers, crab raiders, and that is all I've seen at this location based on the enemy attacks here. Uh, I also don't think I got tax man, any of the tax people in this area, which, uh, is probably because it's on the cusp of United Cities territory. Ocran's Pride here, this is in the dead center of Holy Nation territory. When you are in Ocran's Pride, it's very, very hard to find iron and copper close to one another. Right here, uh, I built mine next to a couple iron deposits. The closest copper deposit was far to the south here to the, uh, next to the Holy Farm. It's actually close enough to the Holy Farm that you're not able to build next to the copper because it's still within the, the city proximity of Holy Farm. 
it is very hard to find copper in Ocarina's Pride next to iron. That was the biggest drawback of building in that zone. You will get bothered a lot in this area. You get dust banded attacks, black dragon ninjas, and also the Holy Nation Prayer Day. If you miss Prayer Day, or if you uh, don't answer the Holy Nation when they come up to your base and are like, hey, you have women in your base, you know, what's up, bro? Or if you have Shek or Hivers in your base and the Holy Nation come up and are like, hey, you got in unchained beasts in your base. What's up, bro? Uh, if you don't answer them and show them the Holy Flame and be like, here's my book, fuck off. They will come back with an army and then fight you. And uh, once you start that Holy Nation assault cycle, it's very hard to uh, pacify and placate them. I actually don't know how that's done. You might have to go to one of the pacifiers in a town and a Holy Nation pacifier and talk to them to stop the base raids. I've always just done import game or left that base. And uh, then the base raids usually stop. After you import game, they definitely stop. After uh, you leave that location, um, they usually stop. Depending on what your negative faction is with the, the faction in question. Leviathan Coast base location. This is one of my... Uh, this is a pretty good base location. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would rank it up there quite high. It is an end game base location and you will have to make a quite large base if you want to encapsulate all the iron that is in the, the proximity where you see my screenshot here. Also, I can actually show you in game if we scroll out to Leviathan Coast. This is where the base location is right here. And uh, we won't. I won't be able to show you the actual base since I don't have a character up there, but it is uh, lots of iron and a decent amount of copper in that area. This is, this is also my sonorous dark base, which is actually one of my more favorite locations to make a base. We'll, we'll get there, though. Don't worry. Uh, Leviathan Coast, the only raid I seen there was Cannibals. So Fishman Island, this is another great location, in my opinion, to make a base. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of... This is the best location because there's copper and iron in that local vicinity. Environment's good. Um, enemy attacks are very low. I didn't get any when I was there. Although, if you piss off the Southern Hive, they might send um, attacks your way. I didn't piss off the Southern Hive, though, so I, can, uh, I can't say for sure. And, uh, like it says, trade caravans will occasionally show up, too. Sonorous Dark, this is the location you see me at in uh, when I actually tab into the game. This is a pretty good base base location for end game. You will get attacked here by Reavers and Skin Bandits. You will not be able to grow food here at all unless you have hydroponics. Which you can see I have a whole rooftop of hydroponics. I also have a rooftop over here of hydroponics. Uh, that is good because we need basically round the clock food production in order to feed how many characters I have, because I have way too many characters. Way, way too many characters. And as you can see, they, they just pound through the food. The, uh, I personally like this base location as f for training combat stats, because the base attacks that happen here are very good for training your characters. Apparently I have somebody protecting, oh, all right, he's in the United Cities. United Cities will send uh, attacks down here occasionally as well if you are hostile with them, which I am. It's also, a, this base location is also in close proximity to the Ashlands, which is good when you want to do your end game exploration. You can basically hop, skip, and a jump over to there. The only negative about this location that I would say is obviously it's going to be a hard zone. You're going to have to deal with skin bandits while you're here, which are one of the harder enemies in the game and one of the harder factions. Um, you're also going to have to do power here instead of wind because the wind there is just non-existent so you have to do actual generators which means you're going to have to grow crops with hydroponics which again this is going to be an end game base location there's no uh there's really no doing it in mid game because it requires end game research it also requires um uh higher level characters that can you know survive out here and not just roll over and get killed Ocarin's Gulf. This is another Holy Nation uh, territory base. In my opinion, it's one of the lesser ones. I didn't really um, enjoy it too much. It was decent. It had iron, copper, and you could farm here. Decent fertility. Um, 
that's really i mean it's just it's just another base location i would if, if i had my choice i would go further east and do it in fog islands instead of here which is significantly better better gut despite um despite my original feelings towards this zone it was actually a great base location tons of beak things which are fantastic for skilling up your characters and uh good iron good copper and good protection from enemy raids because the beak things provide a pretty good uh, barrier towards being attacked. Usually, all raids that came towards my base were annihilated before they got there. And any ba raids that did arrive at my base were pretty wounded by the time they got there. Usually, at least some of them were limping and late to show up. Spider Plains, base location here. One of my favorite. I call it Squin 2.0. It is... Uh, you literally build in, in between two canyons, and it, it, it is like a squin recreation. It was quite cool and uh, quite enjoyable. Um, anytime you do build in Shek territory, though, either Stan Desert, Spider Plains, or... Um, actually, I think those are the only locations they'll send raids to. When you build in Shek territory, they harass you nonstop. It's Band of Bones, Cross Chosen, uh, the Shek... Kingdom will send food or uh, base attacks to take you out, and then if that's not uh, if that's not bad enough, Holy Nation will also send t attacks in United Cities too if you're hostile towards either of them. Sinkun base location, um, it's all the way up in the northeastern portion of the map. This location I would give uh, a pretty low rating to. It had one iron, four copper, so not too bad as far as uh, mining goes in terms of copper you need more iron than copper in order to do high level um production cannibal swarms were the only things that i seen here traders do show up from time to time dark finger on the other hand is a little bit better than sinkun i uh would give it a little bit higher rating as you can see the environment's a little better 100 percent iron 50 percent green instead of 10 percent green again lots of cannibals also dark finger is better for uh resources three iron two copper instead of one iron four copper we need more iron than we do copper so it just works out better overall in my honest opinion sten desert mining outpost here this is a lower level location it's one of the early base locations that i like to do when i start out in the hub and squin area you just make a base here and then you're close proximity to squin close proximity to the way station and close proximity to admag and technically the hive villages too if you would like to get lanterns of radiance or any of the hiver undergarments that you need for gearing out hivers early on um no farming at this location in sten desert um you have to make all your money off of electrical components and or mining so as you can see here i have a uh, a blank location for skinner's room because we're actually going to be making a base location there soon and that's also what's going to bring me to this point here where I tab back into the game and I explain things a little bit more. So we went through Leviathan Coast and we also went through, uh, well, we didn't go through the Iron Trail. The Iron Trail is not too um, good of a location to make a base as far as I know. Let me actually pull it up on my other computer so I can see what the uh, environment is. 50% arid, 100% green. Actually, it's not too bad. As far as fertility, water, arid, green, and all of that goes, I will probably find a location in that zone to build a base at some point in the future. Uh, quite interesting. Purple Sands, Berserker Country. Purple Sands is almost all arid. I wouldn't really recommend building a base there too much. And uh, I'm pretty sure the environment is dead. Berserker Country, it might be the same thing. I'd have to uh, look up Berserker Country. There is, um, yeah, Berserker Country is dead. No iron, well, very little iron and copper as well. So, yeah, I, I definitely would not recommend making a base there. And I remember Purple Sands is basically inhospitable too. The Shrieking Forest isn't too bad as far as um, environment and everything else goes. It wouldn't, it, the main reason that I would recommend making a base in Shrieking Forest is if you want to be constantly under attack by Shrieking Bandits, it's good for training your characters and getting them prepared for end game which is one of the reasons that i liked it it's good in copper good in iron and if i remember correctly uh the fertility is good enough to grow as well floodlands if i remember correctly it is a completely dead environment and really not worth it for building a base in it's um 
it's just it's it's not a good location yeah uh it's 100 percent arid based on what i read online what i'm looking at online and the fertility is unknown and the water is zero which is kind of interesting considering the fact that you know there's water all over the zone obedience is another dead environment zone i wouldn't recommend building there also iron and copper is non-existent in that area rebirth is um holy nation territory it's where the mines of rebirth are i actually do not know if um i'm, uh, I'm googling it now on my other computer i actually don't know if the if the environment is here fertile or like what it even is and apparently the kenshi oh okay it does i was looking at rebirth Yep, dead environment. 0% arid, green, swamp, can't grow there whatsoever. And iron and copper is basically non-existent there either. So, yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not sold on rebirth. Um, probably not that good. Arm of Ocran, the environment there is okay. I can't really recommend that zone too, too much. It is very hilly. Um, iron and copper is probably more um, plentiful there than, you know, rebirth and maybe some other surrounding areas. I just I, I wouldn't recommend Arm of Ocarin too much. There's also two sections of Arm of Ocarin you can see up here. This section where World's End is, and there's also this section here down south. Ocarin's Valley is a very very desert area. Um, there is very low fertility, very low water, if any, in uh, a lot of the areas, and the iron and copper is pretty spread out. It if anything, it would be a decent noob zone base location or a mediocre noob zone base location. The hidden forest right here is one of the noob zones. It's basically a noob zone that you'll spend time in if you do uh, Rebirth Slaves playthrough, if you do the Cannibal Hunters playthrough or Guy with a Dog playthrough. All three of those playthroughs kind of go through that area. And uh, the hidden forest isn't the worst location to build your first base. The, the environment isn't the best. Um, Actually, I think the environment, I think you can grow there, but I think the environment sucks, if I, if I remember correctly. I just have to look it up. The one zone to the northeast of the Hidden Forest is actually better. That one is called the Northern Coast, which we're going to be talking about next. Yeah, the Hidden Forest is actually okay for water and uh, pretty good fertility. It's just finding iron and copper close together is the, the hard part. But it is green. It is a green environment, so growing there isn't the worst. So northern coast here, this is a halfway decent zone for a base. I built my base in this area here. I actually don't have this location on my website because it was before I started uh, cataloging my base locations. But I built a base in this area here, and uh, it was able to have a farm. It was able to have uh, iron and copper production, so it basically had everything it needed. And it was a uh, halfway decent, you know, base location. Bast. So the issue that I've come in when I've gone to Bast each time is I've had a very hard time finding iron and copper close to each other. Um, there is iron in the zone. There is copper in the zone. It's just hard to find them close to each other. And I think farming is non-existent in that zone. If I remember correctly, fertility is very, very low. So Spine Canyon and Skim Sands, these are kind of like... Uh, Spine Canyon's kind of too small to really give a, you know, uh, a base location specifically for that zone. And Skim Sands kind of is just like a, a, a continuation of the Great Desert with more skimmers is what it ultimately comes down to. And uh, I don't personally find either of those two zones worth it for building a base in, which is why I don't have a base location for either, either of them. But you might be able to find iron and copper close enough there to uh, make a base. Iron Valley, not a good location for a base. It's too inhospitable, and it's too annoying to navigate. Deadlands, I'm actually going to do a base location there at some point. It is worth mentioning, though. It's acid rain 24-7, so only hivers or skeletons will be able to survive there without any issue. And, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So only hivers and skeletons will be able to uh, survive there without any issue. And ultimately... Um, that is the only way that I, w I could honestly recommend making a base for that location. If you're going to do like a role-playing playthrough where you're going to play a hiver, then it might, you know, might be worth it. Gray Desert. So uh, you can buy, I think, the tower. 
at this way station. Um, otherwise, this zone is okay for making a base in, I would say. It's not, uh, it's not great, not terrible, is basically how I would describe it. The environment, I think, is too bad to uh, grow plants in. But if I remember correctly, the iron and copper is kind of plentiful in the area. So it would be mostly a mining location. The eye, um, in this location here, kind of the eastern portion of the eye by where the gray desert is, this is uh, the best location to make a base, somewhere in this area. You can find iron and clop copper close together, and also the fertility is decent enough to grow. If I remember correctly, the eye environment is all arid, but it might be like 100% arid, 10% green. That It might be that. The Black Desert, I think, is inhospitable. I wouldn't recommend a base there. Venge, uh, the environment sucks. It's also hard to find iron and copper close to, uh, together where there's no sky beams that are completely destroying you. So I wouldn't really recommend that zone either. The Unwanted Zone, it's not really good for anything. Uh, there's lots and lots of enemies there. It is... Uh, like, and it's it's got the widest variety of enemies I've ever seen in any zone in this game. It's got beak things, it's got crabs, and I think it's got um, w whatever the other common enemy is. I forget, but it's got it's got quite a bit. And uh, as it's the name suggests, it's kind of unwanted. There's um, not much to do not much to do there. Well, actually, nothing to do there. Nothing to explore. If you wanted to build a base there, it would be it would have great natural protection. That's one thing that I could say about it. The environment. I actually want to Google this because I, uh, I forget. Okay, 50% fertility, 50% water, 100% green, and according to the wiki, the stone, iron, and copper is halfway decent. So, maybe, you know? There, uh, there might be a location that you can find iron and copper close enough together in that zone. Maybe I'll eventually get to that zone and cover it. So Stobes Garden, this is a uh, one of the better end game locations for a base in the eastern portion of the zone here. You can find a cliff top. I've already talked about it in this video that you can build a base on. It's also close enough to Green Beach. Uh, Green Beach, as far as I'm aware, has a few locations that are worth building in. I have not built in Green Beach yet though, so to each their own. Uh, also, before we get too far down south, you see this little strip of land right here on the map. This is actually, uh, there's actually, I think, iron and copper nodes close enough together out here that you can build a base at. Also, this area is very unfrequented by any base attacks if you did build out here. This, uh, it isn't a zone. It's just an, uh, like an area, an island strip outside of all zones. So it's basically an unnamed territory. And uh, a few people have been fond of making bases there. Up to you if you want to do it, but it is an option. Forbidden Isle, you can cross that zone off as far as I know. It's not that good for making a base. The Outlands, I um, don't know much about the Outlands, honestly. I've considered making a base there. Um, I would have to find a location that, again, has close iron and copper before making a base. That is like one of the main qualifications I look for, is close iron and copper close enough to each other that I can build within the same city walls. Green Beach, going back to this, would be a good location for a base because of good environment. You just need that iron and copper close to each other, which I'm pretty sure it has. You would just need to search for it. Um, moving on to the pits east, no environment, or sorry, dead environment, but it does have lots of high quality iron and copper, and it also has a very rocky um, environment. So to where you could build good natural protections for your base. The pits, dead environment, and uh, it's easier to navigate this environment than the pits east. And also, again, good iron and copper close to each other is what you're looking for. And the copper and iron quality in the pits is quite high. Uh, the crags, I don't think I would recommend making the base there because uh, there's going to be lots of skeleton and skin bandits there. So that would be the, the main danger that I would worry about and that I would warn about at that location. So, uh... I'm actually going to send Runner up there because I want to discover some stuff. Ashlands, that would be uh, not a good location to make a base. It's too hostile. Or, sorry, the environment is too crappy and it's too hard to find copper and iron close to each other is what I would say. 
Um, if you can, though, go for it. And also, the, the navigation in that zone is abysmal. Um, Sonorous Dark. This is actually a lot better of a location than people give it credit for, for building a base. Because, uh... The iron and copper quality in this zone is insane. Like, let me show you here. If I click on this iron, 200 iron quality. 250, or 240% max efficiency. And this copper, 150 quality. 150% max efficiency. You just can't get copper and iron quality that good in many other zones. Which is one of the reasons that I picked here. You will just need hydroponics, though, in order to reliably grow food here. Sniper Valley is a dead environment again, and if I remember correctly, there was no iron and copper close enough to each other to warrant building there. Um, Stobes Gamble, it was, was kind of the same, dead environment, and I struggled to find copper and iron close enough to each other to warrant building there. Um, this secret drug farm area up here, this might be a good area to build in if you can um, find iron and copper close enough to each other because it's close to Flats Lagoon. So, Gray Shelf. Gray Shelf had an okay environment, I think I would say. I would describe it as. Um, I think the issue I've ran into with Gray Shelf is no copper and iron that I could find close enough to each other. Let me actually check the Gray Shelf environment, too. Let me uh, fact, fact check myself in real time. No, the Gray Shelf has no environment. It's uh, a dead environment, so I was wrong about it. Royal Valley is the one that I was thinking about that had an okay environment, but I wasn't able to find iron and copper close enough to each other to build in that zone. Cheaters Run, if I'm not mistaken, it has a dead environment, so it's not worth building in at all. Come on, runner, get up there. Well, runners being stupid, that's fine though. So, Bonefields right here. Bonefields is a okay zone, I guess, to build a uh, base in. I wouldn't put it at the top of the list. The environment is mostly arid. Also, fertility and water is low at the location as well. So, that is the, the other drawback of building there. Runners being silly. We'll, we'll double click on her. She's getting killed by uh, skeleton bandits. High bone fields. This is technically a better location to build than bone fields. However, it's going to be hard to find iron and copper close to each other. It's also going to be difficult to uh, grow here because the environment isn't the best. Also, as you can see, since we're in the crags right now, the iron here is also good. You can see we have uh, iron quality, 200. And there's going to be lots of other, you know, there's iron all over the place here. Like I said before, the hardest part is usually finding iron and copper close enough to each other to uh, use. That is the, the big, the big thing. So moving on, high bone fields, the burning forest has an okay environment. Uh, acid rain 24-7. That's going to be the biggest drawback from there. And, of course, finding iron and copper close enough to each other. South Wetland, I found no iron and copper close enough to each other, but it is a good um, farming zone. The Hook, uh, I personally haven't built in the Hook yet because it is very, very out of the way. Nobody starts a new game down there, and the only way to get down there is to run through zones that are harder than it. So I just haven't built there. Uh, again, iron and copper next to each other would be the, the, the main thing to go for. And the environment in that zone is nothing unique. It's just uh, very arid and I think very minorly green like most other zones. Shun is going to be the kind of the same as the hook. Um, if you can find iron and copper close to one another, that would be a good zone to build in. And the environment is going to be, I think, comparable to the hook. Um, mostly arid, a little bit green. The crater, uh, as far as I remember, there was no copper in that zone. However, there is a decent amount of iron and also the environment is dead. So the only thing that I would recommend building there is maybe a pit stop to use while farming in the adjacent area. 
the grid not really worth building in environment is dead no resources to be gathered there Arak um, not really worth building in if I remember correctly the environment is dead and there's no resources resources worth gathering there either and that really is everything I can think of adding into this video it went on a lot longer than I expected but we covered basically every zone and most of the base possible base locations uh, throughout the game if uh, if you guys have any base locations that I missed that you think I should should have had, please let me know in the comments section below. It's always nice to get a full list of, you know, base locations and everything like that. Also, I will probably be adding more base locations as time goes on to my website. I am still actively working on uh, bases. As you've seen before, I was working on Skinner's Rome, which uh, is actually one zone that I didn't address. Skinner's Rome, I am building a base right here in the in this zone. It has iron and copper close enough to each other while still having decent fertility in water. And did oh Dreg is another zone I didn't mention. Dreg, um it has an okay environment. Again, most zones in Kenshi have an arid and green environment combination. So um It's nothing unique when a zone has an arid and green environment combo. It's unique when it has something that's, you know, different from that. And Dreg has an iron and, uh, or sorry, a arid and whatever, green combination. If I remember correctly, it's like 70% arid, 10% green or something like that. Which uh, just makes it another eh zone in my opinion. And that is, that I think is the last zone we can cover. I think, I think I've done every last zone in this gosh darn game when we didn't do but when you can't build it and it's very small anyway so it's not even really that uh worth mentioning the only thing that's there is the armor king merchant which uh of course sells some of the best in slot armor and okay that is really all there is to it i'm pretty sure we did all we did everything again if i got anything wrong missed anything or you guys would like to throw in one of your own base locations that you enjoyed let me know in the comments section below and if this video did help you out be sure to leave me a like because that helps me out aside from that i will catch you guys around in future kenshi videos peace